Well here we are on a quiet Easter Sunday morning. Happy Easter everyone! Uh, today's video going to cover a few more observations with the Pure Drive Energy 4.8 kilowatt hour home storage battery that I've got here on test thanks to Christian from Power Different. One of the things I wanted to show you was using this remote console inside VRM, that's the settings for the Victron inverter, that's part of the Pure Drive Energy battery. And changing the grid set point there from minus 100 down to zero is going to give priority to the battery. So I'm going to have more energy charging into the battery, and it's going to take that in favor of energy from the My Energy Eddy device that's heating my hot water. So 2.3 kilowatts is the maximum the battery can achieve. So once it's got to that, that's job done. We've grabbed as much energy as we possibly can, and it's almost there now. There we go, so it's at its maximum. Now if we do it the other way around, we can prove that we can give priority to the My Energy Eddy device instead of the battery. So back to grid set point, changing it from zero to minus 200. That's basically gonna say, put 200 watts out to the grid, don't use it all. So the battery isn't gonna use all of the energy available, the My Energy Eddy device will say thank you very much and it will grab that 200 watts. And then it'll go around and check again and grab another 200 watts and some more, and that's how it's going to prioritize by the battery leaving some and the My Energy Eddy device always grabbing it. And what we're seeing is gradually less and less energy going to the battery, more and more energy going to the My Energy Eddy device until it's at its maximum, which is now 3.2 kilowatts. This is exactly what I was hoping for from a home storage battery. I was hoping it was controllable. The next thing I want to share was basically my quest for achieving zero grid import. So we start here with a graph that is showing just one watt hour of energy from the grid from midnight until about seven o'clock in the morning when I'm getting up making a cup of tea. Just to remind you all, this is a graph from the Solar Edge app, which is looking at my Solar Edge inverter and the panels connected to it. It can't see the panels that are going through my Solace inverter. So the consumption numbers, which are derived, will be incorrect, and the system production numbers won't include what I'm generating through the Solace inverter either. But the import numbers and the export numbers and the shape of the graph indicating whether we've got uh, any solar generation, etc., that's all correct. So, putting some hot water in a pan on our hob, it's an induction hob, and turning it on to nine, the maximum, that's using 1.3 kilowatts of energy. That caused an additional three watt hours of energy to be consumed from the grid. The 1.3 kilowatts is well within the capability of the battery to deliver that extra energy, but of course what we're talking here is a change. The battery was being charged by the solar energy, now it's going to stop charging and start to discharge, and there's a time delay in that process. It's only a fraction of a second, but that fraction of energy usage coming from the grid has been recorded here as 3 watt hours. And just to show you the raw information that's available in the background, I can export the data from the VRM application and import it into a spreadsheet system. And uh, this is what I've done. And it shows five minute time intervals. And you can see that they're all positive in value. And when they're positive, that's charging the battery. And then on the one time slot where it's 7.12 a.m., it basically goes negative, And that's where the battery is delivering power to the house. And that's providing the extra 1.3 kilowatts needed to heat the hot water. What happens next is we're using the solar energy from the panels to heat the hot water using the eddy device and also recharging the battery. You can see that in the blue self-consumption part of the graph at the bottom. So when it's within the green, the blue is showing self-consumption. Anything above that in green, that's excess solar generation. And the energy we're importing from the grid has just risen from 9 watt hours to 11 watt hours. You can see on the area chart we've got that uh, gap of green now. That's basically showing that the battery has been charged and the hot water is up to temperature. And all of the green is showing that it's all excess going out to the grid. The small spike of blue that we've got there is the hot water being heated again to the right temperature. We've probably just done some washing up, that sort of thing. Import from the grid is now up to 14 watt hours. It's not a lot, is it? It's a tiny amount. And we've reached the peak of the day. There's now enough solar being generated to provide all the energy for me cutting the lawn, cutting the hedge, 
the uh, oven on, the hob on, the microwave on, everything is being used as we need, but it's not coming from the battery because the import isn't going up very much. We've got very, very little energy coming from the battery on this day. It's all being consumed from solar. So because it's not starting and stopping, other than the eddy device heating the hot water, the import isn't going up very much at all. And we finished the day on an incredible 0 0.018 of a kilowatt hour for the entire day's usage. The reason it's so, so low is simply because there was so much solar generation, we didn't need to use the battery very often. The reason why we've got so little grid usage here is basically because I kept the house usage really low. And when we did turn a device on, it was mostly within the limits of what I was generating from the solar panels. So the battery wasn't needed during the day at all, just during the night. This graph shows it quite well. It highlights that we have so much export, so much available energy that we didn't need to use the battery during this day. And yeah, when the amount of power that is required to power the house is quite low and you haven't got things starting and stopping, that's when you're not going to use hardly any grid energy at all. Obviously, if we were on a cloudier day and we had less solar generation, then we'd need to use the battery more. And the more instances that you need to use the battery, the more grid usage that you can expect to see. And this little spreadsheet highlights why I'm interested in saving these tenths. It's not about the money because a penny here and a penny there is not making any difference whatsoever, obviously. But it is really cool knowing that for 10 days in a row, our electricity meter hasn't changed at all. It doesn't show decimal places, so I can't see it changing. It's been on 21,720 for 10 days now because we're using less than a tenth of a kilowatt hour a day. And long may it continue. Thanks for watching. As always, see you again soon. Bye bye for now.